Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Alright, pack one, pick one. Nimble Trap Finder is a rare. Playable card, but it's not the most exciting rare to open. I think Roost of Drakes might just be a better card overall and great in the Kicker Synergy decks. But it's also just fine by itself, even if you only have a handful of kicker cards. Then Into the Royal is great too. Nice interaction in the Roost of Drakes deck. And anything else that jumps out, I guess the Horn Beetle if you can build around it in kind of the black green plus one plus one counter deck. Those are the cards that speak to me. I haven't really drafted a kicker synergy deck yet, so don't mind taking the Roost. And then, I mean, we're probably not going to wheel into the Royal, but we might wheel the Geyser Mage, which would still synergize with the Roost of Drakes. So let's give it a shot. Ooh, alright. Second pick, Bubble Snare seems perfect after a Roost. A nice removal spell, can kick it if needed. Royal Mage would also be a nice one to wheel, although the blue-green kicker deck probably has a slightly bigger focus on creatures as opposed to the blue-red wizard spells deck where the royal mage is typically at its best or like blue-black I guess can also be quite nice if you've got some removal uh, feed the swarm decent removal in black beckoning could also be nice if we end a blue-black kicker instead but uh, the fact that bubble snare keeps us in blue is also a nice bonus so don't see a reason to pick a second color yet Cinderclasm can also have its moments. And then there's the Relic Golem for kind of the blue-black mill deck. Let's just take the snare. Third pack. So had we taken the Horn Beetle in the first pack, then the Skeleton would have been a great find here. Don't see any amazing kicker cards, like Shell Shield has kicker, but it's not a card we want to take early. And we might not even play it even if we do get it. Seafloor Stalker scan a medium, better in the party synergy decks, which this typically doesn't end up. So, can probably speculate on a second color here. Both the red uncommons, the treachery and the minotaur can be great. Treachery probably may be better with what we currently have, as we might not end up with a ton of party creature types. I'm also a big fan of Subtle Strike as a combo trick. But uh, yeah, let's take the dual face card here. These cards don't seem amazing, but having a few of these in your mana base can make your deck a lot more consistent. And a Royal Eruption 4th pick is a great sign that red is open, so it makes me happy I took the Treachery. And definitely the pick here. Other good cards, I'm a big fan of the Hellion, especially if you've got a lot of these dual-faced cards, as it can pick those back up. The Electromancer can be good in aggressive party synergy decks. Cleric can also be a nice creature type in a blue deck where you typically don't have a lot of clerics. And then there's a Disruption, which would maybe be my pick after the Hellion and after the Royal Eruption here. And yeah, we can just keep taking these dual-faced cards. A Coom Warrior, not an exciting card for 6 mana, but having the flexibility of playing it as a land is great. And again, red seems wide open here. Treachery into Royal Eruption into a Coom Warrior. Lagak is also playable. Charger, probably not at its best in a deck we're trying to draft, but it can be quite good in a red-white equipment deck. And then Glacial Grasp is also a card I'm happy to include in most blue decks. But still gonna go with the Warrior. And then... Cleansing Wildfire can be a way to enable landfall, although we don't have any landfall cards at the moment. Probably just going for the Glacial Grasp. I could speculate on green with the Regrowth. Could speculate on white with the Stampede, which are both fine cards. But I still have hope that we can end up blue here, and Glacial Grasp is totally fine. Yeah, Wildfire can also potentially fix your mana. That's worth pointing out. Seventh pick. I guess I'll take the Spellcraft. It's not an exciting removal spell at 5 mana, it's pretty expensive. But it's still removal. 
the alternative here would be Stalker as kind of a medium filler 3 mana creature, or the Gnarled Colony Speculate on green. I'll just take a Spellcraft. And there's some green cards here, none of them are particularly exciting, even though some of them have Kicker, but red is definitely the color we want to be since red was passed to us. Blue, we took two blue cards early, so it doesn't necessarily mean blue is open, but Cascades here is still a fine filler card at 4 mana, so I don't mind taking it here. Rage, we don't seem super aggressive, so it's probably not the best Rage deck, but Cascades here is fine. And Deliberate versus another Spellcraft, probably take the Deliberate, don't have many 2 mana cards yet. And uh, yeah, Spellcraft is just a little clunky. We wield Cinderclasm, does have Kicker, so potentially synergizes with Roost of Drakes, although I guess it would also kill our own creatures. But it's fine. And then a Scorch Rider, I guess, could be some filler at 4 mana. And wield the Hellion, so red is definitely wide open. We should definitely be red. Blue, I could potentially see myself moving out of blue if we open an amazing card in a different color. But uh, for now, blue-red seems the way to go. Well, I'm just gonna take a Relic Robber here, great card. Don't have a ton of ways to necessarily ensure that the Relic Robber can hit the opponent and keep making those Goblin Constructs. But we can maybe pick up like a Kite Sail or just more removal to clear a path. Glacial Grasp can tap a creature down. We've got a Roiler option. So... Relic Robber still the pick. Anything we can hope to wheel. I wouldn't be upset wheeling a Skyclave Sentinel here. Definitely a fine filler card, especially if we have some Kicker Synergy. Or a Royal Mage, of course. And what do we have next? There is a Geopede, which has a bit of synergy with our uh, Cleansing Wildfire and our Hellion, which can also pick up a land again, can maybe wheel another Wildfire. Or I can just take the Hazard. Might just be the Hazard here. Blue, red isn't the best color for landfall creatures. This card would be quite good in like red-white or red-green, where you've got more synergies to pick up lands again. It is true that Sneaking Guide does synergize quite well with Relic Robber, but I'm pretty sure we can get one later. Like this one might wheel, and then we can pick it up. Yeah, let's just take the Hazard. Ooh, wow, what a pack. Can I just take the entire pack and move to pack 3? I think I would do so if I could. Charger, Sorcerer, Mystic, Nodder Treachery, Field Research, Hellion. I just want all these cards. But we gotta make a choice. I mean, Charger does look quite good, also with the Roost of Drakes. Umara Mystic. Don't have a ton of cheap instants and sorceries necessarily to enable it, so it seems medium. Sorcerer, we don't have a ton of wizards. Only have one of them. But it of course also triggers off instants and sorceries. I think I just take the charger here. And I'll keep taking dual face cards with Valakut Awakening. Nice way to refresh our hand if we draw a few too many lands. And can also be played as a land itself. And we're not passing anything too amazing. Alright, so what do we have here? Uh, not a fan of Barrage or Concerted Defense. Can take another Cascade Seer. There's another Spellcraft. Or Spare Supplies if we just need a filler 2-drop. So, putting these lands kind of separately. Roost is more of a 4-drop. This is also more of a 5-drop. I think I just dig the Cascade Seer for now. Another Umara Mystic, also makes picking up wizards a bit better. 
I'm also a big fan of the bug catcher, although we don't have the best deck for it. And then Cleric would be a good defensive creature, but I think it's just a mystic here. And now it's between Runner and Field Research. If I take Runner, I'll have both Runner and Relic Robber as creatures that we kind of want to get in for damage. So then taking something like those uh, one mana goblins to make them unblockable could be a thing. But I think Field Research is just overall the better card, especially the fact that it has Kicker and works with our Roost of Drakes. But a runner could definitely be good if we end up with some of those one mana goblins. Big fan of the Ambusher as a two drop since it's still relevant in the late game as you can pump it. Maybe we'll play Electromancer, we'll see. And there's a sneaking guide on the wheel. Don't think I'm playing Anticognition since we're not really a deck keeping up instants and don't have too much synergy with the wildfire, so I'll take a sneaking guide, although I don't know if I'll play it yet. It also works pretty well with the ambusher if you've got a ton of mana, can make it unblockable and then pump it afterwards. Hellion vs. Cleric. Hellion is quite good in this deck, definitely better than Living Tempest. And yeah, we'll probably end up with another 2-drop creature at some point. Maybe I want a Rider. I don't know. We've got a lot of four drops is a problem, but we've got like almost no warriors. I guess Ambusher's a warrior. Don't know if we'll play that one. Ooh, nice. A bug catcher on the wheel. That's a gift. Last pack. Opened the rare mill card. We're not really trying to mill people out, so it's not great for us. So a bit of a disappointing pack. I guess there's like a Cleric of Chill Depths as a 2-mana creature. It is a Cleric, so it's an extra creature type in case we want to play the Buck Catcher or the Electromancer, so it's probably fine. Let me take a look here. I've got two Cacophonies in my collection. I don't know, there's a good chance I even wield a Cleric. I'll, I'll just Rare Draft here. Next up... There's another Glacial Grasp, or a Spare Supplies. I guess Glacial Grasp is fine. Ooh, nice Into the Royals, perfect. A bit of interaction, and it has Kicker. So that's an easy pickup. Another Cinderclasm, or Spitfire Lagak. So we definitely don't lack playables in this deck. I mean, it's possible I just want double Cinderclasm and then I don't play any cheap creatures with two toughness. Like the Ambusher can survive a Cinderclasm and then this kind of takes care of our early game and then we can take over the late game with a couple of three-powered creatures. Yeah, I'll try it. Expedition Champion could be okay, especially if we plan on playing double Cinderclasm. Kite Sail would be nice with a Relic Robber, but I don't have a ton of other creatures I would be happy to put the Kite Sail on. So maybe I should just take the creature here. Don't have a ton of removal if you don't count the Cinderclasms. And then we've got Into the Royal, and then Glacial Grasp can tap something down. And Bubble Snare, I guess we're doing okay. Another Into the Royal's a gift. And the Field Research to get ahead on cards. Not the biggest fan of Saloon Division as far as dual face cards go. Bolton Blast is kind of medium. Sure. Alright, I don't think we're sneaking, and I did get a late Cleric anyways. Don't think I need Seagate Colossus in this deck. So now the plan might just be to play a few 3 Toughness creatures, and then the Cinder Clasms to take care of aggro decks.
So gonna make a few cuts. Of course we have a lot of these dual-faced cards in our mana base, which are gonna be very helpful. And we ended up with a decent amount of kicker cards in the end. With those late into the royals. So that makes our Roost of Drakes a lot better too. Let's put all our dual face cards in a separate pile for now. I think that's all of them. Then Roost of Drakes, more of a 4-drop. I like to put my interaction kind of separately. Because you're typically not casting your interactive spells on curve. Alright, so this paints a better picture of our deck. This kind of goes in the 5-drop slot as well. Alright, so... Deliberate is still kind of nice with Umara Mystic. That's one of the main arguments for keeping a cheap cantrip like that. Cleansing Wildfire doesn't do a whole lot for me. Don't have any landfall creatures. Don't really care about fixing my mana all that much. So the Wildfire seems worse than Deliberate. Then Buck Catcher. Let's take a look at our creature types. We have one Cleric. We have one Rogue, seven Warriors, and four Wizards. So on average, this is going to be a 3-2 Trample. Uh, it is two toughness. So it does die to my own Cinderclasm if I kick it. So that's not the best. So I'm not sure if I want to keep this. It is a warrior, so it does also pump my Expedition Champion if I decide to play those. So that's also good to keep note of. My late game consists of Hellions picking up lands again, so we can get access to these dual face cards. Scorch Rider with Kicker. Roost of Drakes can make some tokens. Can draw a ton of cards with Field Research. So our late game looks good, even if we don't have any individual bomb. In terms of interactive spells, I like everything, although I'm not sure if we need both Cinderclasms. So could see maybe cutting one of them and still playing the Bug Catcher, and then we don't care too much about having a few Two Toughness creatures in the deck. That seems reasonable, so let me shave one Cinderclasm. And then, do we want Ardent Electromancer? Electromancer is at its best if we have a lot of creatures or spells we can play after making red mana. So let's say we curve Bug Catcher or Ambusher into Electromancer, we get to make two mana. But with two red mana, unless we draw both two drop creatures or we want to cast a Royal Eruption, we're not doing a whole lot with that mana. So I don't think Electromancer is at its best in this deck. It's also not a warrior, so it doesn't help with the champion. But the two champions are probably necessary to just fill the curve. Makes playing Bug Catcher and Ambusher more appealing. And then it also provides a warrior creature type for when we play Cascade Seer. So that's a nice bonus as well. So this is probably the point where I want to kind of take a look at the mana base and evaluate it based on the dual face cards. So my method so far for determining how many lands we play has been to look at each double face card individually and kind of figure out how often am I going to play a Coom Warrior as a Coom Warrior, and how often am I playing it as a Coom Teeth and just play it as a land instead. With a Coom Warrior, I would say about 75% of the time this is going to be a land. Uh, treachery, probably in the same ballpark. Probably going to be a land more often than not. Follow Could Awakening, I would put in the 50-50 range, where about half the time I expect to play this as a land, and about half the time I expect to play this as a spell. And then Hazards is probably closer to a 50-50 as well, where about half the time this is going to be cast, and about half the time this is going to be land. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 plus uh, 1.5, so we're more or less at 2.5 lands with these four cards, I would say. So rounding it up, three lands, which means that if this deck... How many lands would this deck play? We do have double field research as mana sinks, double into the royal. We do see a lot of cards. We've got a lot of ways to spend our mana. So I think this would be closer to an 18 land deck to, than a 17 land deck. So if I count these as 
three lands, then I think I only cut two lands from the mana base. So we've got 15 plus three is more or less 18, uh, which means I still need to make three cuts total. So what are those going to be? I like the Hellions, especially with all the dual face cards. I like Charger. Could see cutting one Cascades here. Could see cutting the Scorch Rider. Main reason to keep it is that it works well with the Roost of Drakes. Definitely keeping the field researches. Could see cutting Expedition Champion, although they do get better in multiples. So if we play Expedition Champion, we just want to make sure we have as many warriors as possible. Uh, could see cutting Cleric. Could see cutting Deliberate, as it's mainly here to enable Umara Mystic. So those are kind of the cards I'm looking at potentially cutting. So how about one Cascade Seer? The Rider is also Warrior for the Champion, so it also makes sense to keep that. I'll cut the Deliberate, and then keep the Cleric to have an extra creature type for Party, which is useful for Cascade Seer, Ambusher, and... or no, uh, Bug Catcher, and it's also useful for Spellcraft to a lesser extent. So I need to make one final cut. Maybe Glacial Grasp is the most cuttable of those. Yeah, Cinderclasm gives us a very unique effect that can maybe bail us out. And we do have Double Into the Royal, which does a similar thing to Glacial Grasp. So I think that's what I'm cutting here. We're also not really a tempo deck. Like, Glacial Grasp would be better if we had more creatures like the Bug Catcher, where we can apply a ton of pressure, keep the opponent's creatures tapped down and get them dead quickly. Or maybe fly over while we keep their biggest ground creature tapped down. This deck is kind of looking to grind, because we have a lot of card advantage with Research, all the dual face cards, Hellion, picking up lands again. I think that's kind of the tiebreaker here. And then looking at the land distribution, all our dual faced cards are red. We are definitely more red than blue, but I still need double blue for a kicked into the royal. So, considering these as three lands, I can probably cut a mountain at an island. So we're essentially up to eight blue sources and about ten red sources in the mana base. How often am I playing a kicked into the royal on turn four in this deck? I guess Roost of Drake's kicked is also double blue, and Bubble Snare is also double blue. Yeah, I guess I'll go up to nine islands here. All right, I think this is the deck. All right, well, this hand's okay, except for the fact that we don't have blue mana. Um, I can play Kicked Cinderclasm and a Relic Robber. And we're on the play, so Relic Robber on the play, of course, much better than on the draw. I'll try it. Can maybe kill like a one toughness blocker and play the relic robber. It was actually a close call with playing that tapped or not, but with two Hellions we can maybe pick it back up later. Sadly that has two toughness. But they might attack, which would be great. All right, so we get to connect with Relic Robber. And then I can maybe use Cinderclasm plus Hazard to kill this without killing Relic Robber. Although, it is funny that Cinderclasm would also kill the tokens from Robber, so we might not cast the Cinderclasm at this game. But yeah, I think he still just hit him while I can. Yeah, we do have the Volokut Awakening, I believe it's called, to uh, get rid of the Cinderclasm, maybe. I expect something bad to happen to my Relic Robber. Not much I can do about it. Sure. Well, at least they didn't mill my islands. I'll keep Hazard in hand, probably don't need more red mana. Unless I were to draw, I guess, the Hellion. Yep, 
Yeah, Cinderclasm, definitely a bit of a nombo with the Relic Robber here. Although, you know, if we're making tokens, then we just don't have to cast the Cinderclasm. So it's not that bad. Still debating whether I should play Hazard or not. I do still have two Hellions in the deck I could draw, and the kicked uh, Charger as well. So I think I will play Tap now. If my opponent had a One Toughness creature, we probably would have seen it by now. Scorch Rider. So what we could do is attack with a Relic Robber and then play Clasm Kicked if they block. And then we just wipe the entire board. Or we can just into the Royal, the Rider, and then connect once again. And those tokens are definitely starting to add up. Like, we don't need to attack my opponent for the rest of the game, and we could still win. Opponent passes. Field research seems good. I think I prioritized that over playing Omar Mystic in the hopes that we can find some more blue mana and then we could have still played Mystic maybe. Charger it is. They can maybe kill one of them. Yep. That's fine. Opponent still takes four and then they're taking two per turn. Like, they gotta pressure me, but at the same time, they gotta leave back enough blockers so they don't die to the charger. So I can play this kicked. And my opponent explodes. Alright. Relic Robber definitely doing a lot of work here. Fine hands. Definitely playing hazard tapped. And then we can curve champion into Rider, which is also warrior. Put until Naya. Might see some landfall creatures. Survivor. Put Scoundrel on Sentinel so it can attack. That's a nice synergy between the two. Although now I get to attack with my champion. Double rabbit bites. All right, there goes my entire board. So a few ways we can play this. Can play the Hellion. Maybe pick up my Hazard again. Can just bubble snare the Sentinel. Although I'm wasting four mana in that instance. I think I would rather just get the Hellion out there. I've got two answers to the Sentinel. 
And I don't really need six mana next turn. That's a good one. So, I could spellcraft Yashar and attack. Probably attack first. Um, and then next turn have Bubble Snare for Sentinel. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Get in there. This is an instance in case they have a pump spell here. Opponent takes it. I should probably spellcraft now, because if they do have a pump spell as their last card, I don't want to take additional damage. And now we're in a bit of a racing situation. Archon of Amiria. Okay. Flooding a little bit. So if I attack, I'm trading 4 damage for 4 damage. I'm dead in 2 turns. So... Probably can't afford to attack with my Hellion. I will die to the Archon in 4 attacks, but hopefully we can find something in those 4 turns. Don't need to play it kicked. Alright, Umara Mystic is nice, because I can still pump it in the opponent's turn with Hazard. Semi-confident enough to attack with Hellion now? I think so. Survivor. Okay. So I can essentially trade Hazard and Mystic for the Archon now. That's probably fine. The yeah, opponent's also locked out of casting a second spell here, so I don't need to worry about any interaction. Now, of course, they could still play a spell, but they didn't. Ambusher is actually quite decent here. I'm attacking. And then I have to count. We've got seven lands in play. So if I play the eighth and draw a land next turn, I can pump three times as opposed to twice. Which could make a difference. I think I should still play the land. The reason to hold land is if we draw the Follicut Awakening. But I think in this case I'm happy enough playing it out. Into the Royal. So if I pump twice and into the royal i've got nine damage put them to one so i think i would rather play it kicked then as we don't have guaranteed lethal but i think i am fine i mean i don't even have to play this kick necessarily i could just attack and keep into the royal in hand after pumping ambusher twice in case they have some big hasty creature Could be that to the 6-6 six, six Hexproof with haste. I guess that one gets us. I'm 
Alright, so we're in pretty good shape if they don't have that specific rare. And our opponent explodes. Alright, close one. That game kind of showcased the importance of those dual face cards. Even though Spike Field Hazard might not seem like much, it did allow us to trade Umara Mystic for the Archon, and without the Hazard we probably end up losing to the Flyer. Decent hands. Yeah, play this as a land. Would love to find a Hellion at some point, because we are starting to draw a few too many lands, so being able to pick up the Awakening and get rid of them could be useful. Put in place Colony as a 2-2. And a Fisher Wizard. Discarding Stomper, so I guess they don't have a ton of lands in hand. Hazard can kill Wizard. So let's say they kill my Cascades here, attack for four. Do I want to keep Hazard on top? It's kind of medium. I mean, my hand is all removal. I think I would rather just try and find another creature that can block Fisher Wizard as opposed to spending a card killing it. Because then that also kind of means I need to Royal Eruption the Colony, which is not a great play. Five mana. Nissa Zandicon turns it into a 4-4 four, four haste. So that's a fine target for either Bubble Snare or Spellcraft. Bubble Snare especially is nice because then they don't get their land back. Because when it dies they put it back in their hand. That seems nice. And then we can still play Expedition Champion. And I'll pass. Could decide to kill Lagak with the Spellcrafts. Yeah, that seems fine. And... Could attack with the Cascades here now. I'm okay with the double block. And we've got champion to play defense. Unkicked Arbor Mage, so just a 2-3. And I can kick a Scorch Rider if I want to. So now with the 3-3 attacks it gets double blocked by Arbor Mage and something else. And we only kill one creature, so it's not the best at attacking. Rider, if I kick it, also could get double blocked by Colony and Arbor Beach, but it also pumps the champion. Could also just play this unkicked and play Royal Eruption, so we've got some options. What if I play this kicked and attack with everyone? Maybe that's not so bad, because they can only really trade for one of my creatures. Yeah, I think I like that. And then keep the Royal Eruption to maybe go face. And at 16, I'm not too afraid of taking a bunch of damage on the way back. Kill the Arbor Mage. Don't think the Trample's super relevant at the moment. In case they pick up future counter somewhere. So it does shrink down the Champion. Bone is at 8, so I just need to get 3 more damage in. 
if I were to attack with both, they're incentivized to double block my expedition champion. And then we could kill them with Royal Eruption if they don't have anything. Spellcraft killing their own lands, but that's not gonna make a difference here. All right, so yeah, if they uh, played around a kicked royal eruption, they maybe would have killed the three-three. All right, yeah, the sand's quite good thanks to the warrior being a land. I've got a relic robber and some ways to maybe clear a path for it. Still no double rat for the charger, but I'm sure we'll find it eventually. Found double reds. So if they play a random three drop, I might into the royal bounce it so we can clear a path for a relic robber. Hmm, that's annoying. <laughs> that's really annoying. All right, I guess. I'm just not going to enter the royal then and uh, just attack with Robert. They might chum block. So, what do we get rid of? I could get rid of a land. Although, I need double reds for charger and double blue for kicked into the royal and bubble snare. If I'm on the relic robber, try and kill the opponent plan, then keeping the bounce spells is nice, but the problem is they have all these acquisitions experts that can just block. Don't really want to bounce the experts, so I think I do get rid of the Enter the Royal here. Drake's nice. So this will likely force a chum block. And then next turn I can play a kick truce of Drake's. They didn't chum block, so maybe they've got other plans or they just wanted to double block the robber now. That's aggressive. That makes sense. Steals my islands. All right, I guess we're gonna bubble snare Zareth and play champion. Could also Shadow Skull Charger here and hit him for uh, for additional damage. This is a warrior, so it would pump champion next turn. They will be able to replay experts and make me discard another card, so I already have to plan ahead so what I'm gonna discard. I feel like I want to keep the Roost of Drakes, so if my plan is to discard one of my creatures, it makes more sense to discard a champion, at which point I would rather just play chargers this turn. Because we're definitely not aiming for the late game necessarily, we just want to burn them out. So getting 4 damage in seems nice. Opponent kept up 3 mana. Could be for the card that keeps a creature tapped down. I mean, they might just chum block the robber and then, like, kill the charger. So the question is, kick through the drakes versus charger. If I play kick through the drake and draw land, I have the option of kick charger or spellcraft, which are both decent. I think I just play the roosts. Opponent's definitely in a tough spot. 
multiple threats they have to deal with, and they're eventually gonna die to the Constructs if they don't kill us in the meantime. Did not draw the land, sadly, but just gonna smash. Attack with all and let them figure it out. Serpent's gonna fall to one. Maybe if they have the Sweeper that exiles all creatures with Convert Mana cost 3 or less. But uh, nope, just a Drana Silencer. Sweet. On the play, and I see a Relic Robber on the play with plenty of cheap interaction, so I'm down. Now, if, if we want to guarantee that we can hit the opponent with a Relic Robber. There is an argument for just keeping up into the Royal here. As opposed to playing Cleric. If they play a random 2-mana two 2-2, two, two, they could trade, and that kind of messes up our plan. I think getting one hidden with a Relic Robber might be worth into the Royaling here. Alright, they had nothing. That's still fine. And if our opponent's game plan is to try and play blockers, we've got the perfect uh, answers here, so... Yeah, they really needed an actual removal spell. I think kicked into the royals, okay. Or I can royal eruption and cleric, and then if they play creature with more than three toughness, we can enter the royal it, that's probably better. Yeah, this feels pretty unfair, not gonna lie. Yeah, I think my opponent's just dead here. This game is not gonna come to card advantage. If they play a blocker to jump in front of Relic Robber, they're still gonna take three and then they're just dead to the tokens. Oh wow, this is just disgusting. I need to take a shower after this game. Turn 2 Bug Catcher, turn 3 Cleric, take it from there. Haven't seen much of our dual-faced lands in action since the games have ended so quickly. Catch her down. All right. So we're just gonna end of turn, maybe into the royal something.
We are starting to run out of steam a little bit. Have we even drawn our uh, researches yet? I don't remember seeing those. Well, speak of the devil. Could also... Actually, I kind of like playing maybe end of turn spellcraft and then next turn play this kick to get an extra card. It doesn't work out for me if they just play removal spell, but they're probably not going to bother killing the cleric here. So if their play is just to replay the 2-2 flyer, we can kill it, deal one more, and get a little extra mileage out of our field research. All right, we are missing an extra threat here. We've got some interaction, but only dealing one per turn. All right, opponent does get to stabilize nicely here with the priest. We draw another land, so it's not looking great for us. I could into the royal, but don't really want to bounce any of the opponent's creatures. So I'm probably just passing and then hoping we can find another threat at some point. Opponent gets to scry three, so they've got a pretty full party already. Keeps all three on top. Think I bounce the seer here. Ooh, Roost of Drakes. Now that's an awesome draw. And then I could play Kick Bubble Snare as well this turn. I think that's worth it, just to make an extra Drake right away. And then this can hopefully get us across the finish line. Skulker 2-2 two, two Death Touch. Hmm. I would have much rather seen one large creature. Although, can put him to one here. Definitely a close call. Otherwise, I'm just hitting them for two down to four. But then it might be more difficult to get those last points in. I think I do go for it. I guess, like, the main concern is them playing a flyer. Although, wouldn't I have played a flyer if they had one? And most flyers are around five mana anyway. Yeah. A few burn spells in the deck as well that could help me close out the game. And then I want to keep lands in hand in case of a Volokut Awakening. Yeah, Spikefield Hazard would be a fun way to end the draft here. Alright, there's a Flyer. I guess they don't have another Wizard in place. I guess I do want to force a trade while they can draw a card. Definitely have a few top decks that can win the game on the spots. Royal Eruption, Spikefield Hazard would uh, both do it. Hellions are also lethal, just pick up a land and kill them. So we probably have around five or six cards that win the game on the spots. Yeah, I don't have many basic lands left in the deck. Another Diviner. Ambusher. Just trades for Skulker, but I guess it means they have to keep blockers back at all times. Although now that's no longer the case, as my opponent gains 4. 
All right. Well, this game took a turn for the worse. A royal eruption would still do it. How about basic mountain? Cinder classroom would also be reasonable, yeah. Opponents trying to turn the corner before we draw out of it. They probably have a trick here, but I can't really afford to sit back. Yeah, they probably have a way of getting it back from the graveyard. Yeah. Could have been reasonable not to block the priest because of that. Well, opponent is empty handed at least. That's the good news. But now we don't have any single top deck that wins us the game anymore. Are we just dead on board? Awakening is a card we want, I guess. Yeah, that should do it. GG's. All right, on the draw, fine hands. Can still play Cinder Clasm unkicked just to deal one damage. Still play the Bug Catcher for now. Could attack first, see if they block, and then still Cinderclasm trample over. Just to kind of see how they value their pack beasts. Opponent takes it. I guess I'll play a cleric then. So we kind of missed out on one damage, but of course the plan was to Cinderclasm the uh, Pack Beasts. Now... I've got a few options. So the Bug Catcher hits for three. I would be ecstatic if they blocked with the Spitfire Lagak. Because then Cinderclasm cleans up all the opponent's creatures. If they block with the Pack Beasts, I could still Cinderclasm unkicked. Which is probably fine. And then next turn I can kill the Lagak in a number of ways. I could Bubble Snare Lagak. It's not a great answer to it because they keep the Landfall ability. So the play could be to just pass with a plan of Cinderclasm the Pack Beasts. Or I could Bubble Snare the Lagak anyway. I think I pass. Take three. Cascades here in response, probably killed the pack beast then. I 
and then I can untap. A Royal Eruption's not bad, although it doesn't let me double spell this turn, unless I want to bubble snare the Lagak, which I guess is fine. Or I can just play Hellion Attack with Buckcatcher off for the trade. I have a lot of removal in hand, so I don't necessarily want to trade off my creatures. So Spellcraft uses up all my mana. It's pretty efficient. Uh, although it would be a little bit better suited at dealing with the Lagak. So maybe I do go Royal Eruption plus Snare. And try and get this game over with quickly. Spellcraft is potentially two more damage to their face. And a Royal Eruption on the Buckcatcher after some deliberation. Okay. So, I'll attack, fine with the trade here, and then play Hellion. And then we can pick up the Hazard, which can kill the Geopede. So I don't necessarily want to replay it. Even though it doesn't let me necessarily play Spellcraft next turn. That's a good one, but I can attack, and if they block, I can finish off the Akum Warrior. So Hazard definitely doing some work here. Seer would give us a third party member, so this can deal three to the face as well. So they have a rogue, and that's the only relevant type, so costs uh, four mana, so they can't currently activate it. So I could spellcraft, kill one of their blockers, hit them for two, down to six, and then. They're kind of forced to chump. And then I probably kill the Geopede. As opposed to the Stalker. If they have nothing. Then they might block Champion, take 5 down to 1. All my creatures are lethal. If I kill the Stalker, they can trade. And then if they remove the Hellion, they can maybe get back into it. And of course, if they chump, I'm very happy. Alright. Let's see what they've got. Field research, draw two. Second stalker, but they're still dead on board here. All right, sweet. Took us one extra match to get across the finish line, but we got turned on the less. Let's crack some packs. Gotta get those mythic wild cards back in stock. Skydiver, solid card, especially if you're facing the equipment deck. But a 2-1 flyer is still okay. Familiar, nice one for the kicker decks. The fact that it both generates mana and gains life complements each other nicely, because if you have a lot of expensive spells you want to cast, you just want to try and stay alive long enough to be able to cast all of them. So the familiar fits that uh, niche nicely. 
Uh, binding hasn't been as impressive as I originally thought it would be, just because against blue decks they can bounce their own creatures back to uh, avoid the binding, and it doesn't really have any strong synergies in the set. Double white can also be a bit difficult on the mana. It's still obviously a card you'll take pretty highly and play in any white deck, but just hasn't been the removal spell that I thought it would be. And Jace Mermage, definitely a nice one. Would have been great in the kicker deck we just drafted, but pretty much any blue deck is gonna take Jace highly. The Rogue, probably one of the best dual-faced cards, especially if you get the blue-black archetype that can mill the opponent for a bunch, just because it's so cheap and is just very efficient at three mana, as opposed to some of the clunkier dual-faced cards like the Akum Warrior from the deck we just drafted. Falcut Exploration definitely had some good experiences with this. Just a very grindy card advantage engine. Don't necessarily need to have a ton of synergy with it for it to be good. Even in a red-white warrior deck, it's going to be okay. So, yeah, pretty decent card. The Blade Master can also be quite a house in the equipment deck. Stampede, of course, nice dual-faced card. And a Visionary Solid Green card. Archpriest. So far I haven't been super impressed by the whites party decks. I think the best party archetype is the one we faced, the blue-black one. I've had some good experiences with it, especially the 2-mana two 2-1 two that drains the opponent. Does uh, do a good job of being an early play in that deck but still being quite powerful in the late game. And then you've got all the graveyard recursion. But of course if you get an Archpriest you can try and Draft some more of the party creature types in a white aggressive deck. Probably going to be blue-white more often than not, maybe black-white. The Thief, of course, a great payoff for the Rogue's deck. Uh, Rebirth, not the best of the dual-faced cards, but I'll still take it somewhere middle early in the pack and be pretty happy with it. And then the Bug Catcher and the Ambusher, two, two drops that I'm very happy with. Ooh, Nighthawk Scavenger discards a beating, if you can combine it with any sort of mill effects, but even without it, it's probably going to be a 3-mana 2-3 two, to start with, but it's quickly going to get very much uh, bigger and almost impossible to race, can trade for anything if needed. So discards definitely an easy first pick in this pack. Gecko can be okay if you get it out early in the kicker decks as well. Alright, so... Pretty fun draft all around. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.